there friends! Now is the perfect time to visit Japan. The dollar is strong, the yen is low, and the pandemic is over. In this video, I am going to give you the inside scoop on everything you need to know when visiting Japan. Whether it's your first time or you're coming back for more. We'll check out some cool and unusual things to do, find the cheapest and most delicious restaurants, discover amazing prepared food and sushi in the supermarkets. What? Sushi in the supermarket? That's right! And they even make the sushi right there every day! I'll also tell you what to pack. Hint! You'll need good sneakers and socks because you'll be doing a lot of walking. We'll look at special train and bus passes that can save you tons of money and time. Find out the best months to visit, go over the do's and don'ts of using public transportation, and check out the must-have apps and websites to make your trip even better. Wow, that's a lot to cover. So let's jump right in and get started. Japan is incredible. It's a small island where you can visit the beach, mountains, and city all in one day. There are so many exciting things to do that one video can't cover it all. Most people know about the historic shrines in Kyoto or the breathtaking views of Mount Fuji. But in this section, I'm going to highlight some of the more unusual but amazing things to see and do. First up, Skytree. Skytree is one of the tallest towers in the world and it's a must-see in Tokyo. It was finished in 2012, stands at 2,080 feet tall and is located in Sumida City, Tokyo. It has two observation decks with jaw-dropping views of Tokyo. It's open every day, even on holidays. Insider tip, buy your tickets in advance to save money and skip the long lines. There are tons of restaurants and interesting little shops. It even has an aquarium and a planetarium. I'll leave a link in the description below for more information. Next up is watching a sumo practice for free. Instead of trying to plan your visit around the six sumo tournaments held every year, which can be very expensive, how about watching these big guys train for free? Arashi Obeya is the perfect place. You can see their training sessions right from the street through the big windows. Practice happens between 7.30 and 10 a.m. on most mornings outside of tournament periods. I will leave a link in the description below with their website so you can check if they're practicing on the day you want to visit. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below. If you're a real sumo fanatic, you can actually pay to watch a training session inside and the prices range from $83 to $110. This is a very unique experience because you normally wouldn't have the opportunity to sit so close to the sumo wrestlers. I will leave a link below for more information. One day, I was riding the train in Tokyo and these three massive guys got on. They were all wearing huge looking bathrobes and wooden clogs for shoes. Every time they walked, you would hear this loud wooden clapping sound. They had long dark hair tied in a ponytail. And the weird part was, they all smelled like they had taken a bath in concentrated soap. I mean, they smelled and looked so clean. Looking upward, I was amazed because Japanese people aren't usually that tall. They were not only tall, but wide as well. Another must-see place is the Toyosu Fish Market. It opened in 2018 on the man-made island of Toyosu in Tokyo Bay and is the biggest fish market in the world. It's free to visit and you can watch the famous tuna auctions and eat incredibly fresh seafood at the local restaurants. Opening in 2024 next to the fish market is Toyosu Senjaku Bandai, a huge entertainment complex featuring a 24-hour hot spring spa, numerous shops and a variety of restaurants. It has themed streets that look like they're from the Edo period, making it feel like you've traveled back to the 17th century. You can find all kinds of street food, from fish-shaped cakes and charcoal-grilled fish skewers to seafood burgers and more. There are also plenty of sit-down restaurants to enjoy as well. One important thing, if you want to watch the fish auction, which I highly recommend, you need to get there very early in the morning. I'll leave a link in the description below for more information. Forget about Tokyo Disneyland when you're in Japan. You have to visit Edo Wonderland instead. This incredible theme park transports you back to Japan in the 17th century. It's located about two and a half hours north of Tokyo and you can easily get there by bus. At Edo Wonderland, you'll meet ninjas, samurais, and townspeople all dressed in cool Edo period clothing. The park is so realistic, it's even used as a set for TV dramas here in Japan. You can rent a costume and dress up as a samurai or princess while you explore the town shops and museums, play fun games, and watch exciting live shows. There are so many attractions. A spooky haunted temple with Japanese spirits and demons, a ninja training hall and maze, and all kinds of shows from comedy and water magic to action-packed performances. Don't miss the Grand Ninja Theater with its exciting sword battles, magic tricks, and martial arts. The food is amazing too. Try traditional Japanese dishes like soba noodles, charcoal grilled chicken, and duck skewer 
squid on a stick, eel and shrimp over rice, and much more. And here's the best part. Edo Wonderland is located in the beautiful mountains of Nikko City, known for its hot springs and ryokans, which are traditional Japanese inns. But you can also stay at a regular hotel if you prefer. The views are stunning, and there are lots of beautiful places to hike. If you love the outdoors and staying active like I do, there's an amazing hidden paradise that not many people know about. Did you know that Japan has one of the world's best cycling paths? It's called the Shimanami Kaido Cycling Route. And it starts in Hiroshima Prefecture and ends on Chikoku Island. You'll bike over six islands on nine different bridges, covering 44 miles. The bridges, which took 10 years to build, have a dedicated cycling path that's closed to cars. This means you won't have to worry about sharing the road with traffic, allowing you to fully immerse yourself in the surroundings and enjoy a peaceful ride. Along the way, you can soak in breathtaking views of the sparkling emerald waters, savor the fresh local seafood, and explore charming island town shops. The coolest part, you don't even need your own bike. You can rent one right in Hiroshima. Getting there is easy too. From Tokyo, you can take a bus or train to Hiroshima. I'll explain later how you can save a ton of money and time with special transportation passes. Once there, just rent a touring bicycle and start your adventure. This is high on my bucket list. It looks so incredible. When visiting Japan, you don't need to spend a lot of money on food. There are so many cheap and delicious options around every station. What I call Japanese fast food is so much healthier than the fast food in the States. Get your notes app out because you'll definitely want to visit these amazing made-to-order restaurants in Japan. But before we get started, a quick side note. Japan is filled with many great restaurants, and the places I recommend are just a few of the fantastic options available. Be adventurous, explore, and have fun while you're here. First, we have the Big Three Beef Bowl restaurants, Tsukiya, Matsuya and Yoshinoya. They all make gyudon, which is super delicious stewed beef over rice with optional toppings like soft-boiled eggs, cheese, green onions, and red pickled ginger. My personal favorite is Matsuya. It's so good and really inexpensive. For sushi lovers, I highly recommend Sushido. There are other conveyor belt sushi restaurants, but I feel Sushido is the best. Most items are 80 cents per plate for two pieces of sushi, like tuna, salmon, and shrimp. They also have side dishes like fried chicken, ramen, and desserts. You'll definitely get hooked. Craving some tempura? The chain restaurant Tenya serves fresh tempura, and oh my gosh, it's amazing! For just $3.80, you can get assorted fish and vegetable tempura on rice with pickles and a bowl of soup on the side. It's made to order and comes out piping hot. You have to try it. Another must visit is Katsuya. They specialize in pork cutlet, which is one of the most popular meals in Japan. The pork cutlet is coated with flour, egg, and breadcrumbs, then deep fried to a crisp. It's often served with freshly shredded cabbage and topped with a sweet Worcestershire-like sauce. My favorite is katsudon, where the deep fried pork cutlets are served over rice with a sweet salty egg. It's fresh, hot, and un unbelievably good. Need a burger fix? Skip McDonald's and try Moss Burger instead. Their standard Moss Burger comes with a thick slice of tomato and a special meat sauce over a juicy meat patty. If you're feeling adventurous, go for the Rice Burger, which has two soft rice buns with a seafood burger in the middle. I was skeptical at first, but after trying it, I was so surprised. It's really, really good. For family-style dining, check out Saizeria. It's the second largest family chain restaurant in Japan, offering decent Italian food at very reasonable prices. You can order a bunch of dishes because they're so cheap. A whole pizza costs between two to two fifty. It's very popular with Japanese families, students, and young people. Bikuri Donkey is another great family restaurant. The menu is almost exclusively Hamburg steak, which come in all different sizes with toppings and side platters like rice, salad, and soup. You can get the Japanese style Hamburg steak with daikon radish and perilla leaves, or my favorite, the Western style version with cheese inside the burger. The name Bikuri Donkey translates to surprise the donkey and it has a fun backstory the founder chose the name because he likes making people smile donkeys may not be cool or stylish but they have gentle eyes and work their hardest no matter what the founder wanted the restaurant to grow strong and steady just like a donkey you can't leave Japan without trying udon noodles 
The two best fast food restaurants for udon noodles are Hanamaru and Marugame Seimen. You get to choose the toppings for your noodle soup like soft boiled eggs, marinated fish roe, and freshly fried tempura. Marugame even makes the noodles daily right there in the store. The base price before toppings is around $2.15. It's definitely a must try. For Japanese curry, visit Koko Ichibanya. You can customize the spice level, quantity, topping, and even the type of roux. It's a popular chain here in Japan that won't disappoint. Now let's talk about convenience store food. While convenience stores are great and a must see, I highly recommend grocery stores for prepared food. They make it fresh right there in the store and there's a huge variety to choose from, like bentos or lunch boxes, sushi. Yes, grocery store sushi is fresh and cheap. Sandwiches, charcoal grilled chicken, and so much more! Eon and Lopia are my go-to stores. But Lopia can be harder to find depending on where you are. Lastly, bento fast food is amazing. Hotomoto is the king here, with takeout only locations in all 47 prefectures. I have one just two minutes from my home. The bentos are cooked to order, so they're hot, fresh, tasty, and cheap. My favorite is the Noriben lunchbox, which costs about $2.50 and includes fried fish, pickles, and mixed vegetables, all over seaweed covered rice. They have a large variety on their menu so you're sure to find something you'd like. And great news! You don't need to read Japanese because all of these restaurants have colorful pictures of the dishes on their menus. When is the best time to come? Japan takes its seasons pretty seriously with different events and even foods for each one. It gets really hot in the summer and since you'll be doing a lot of walking, that might not be the best time to visit. On top of that, June is also the rainy season here. However, if you don't mind the heat, July and August are filled with colorful festivals. You'll see people wearing yukata, which are summer kimonos, and carrying portable shrines. It's a unique and lively experience. The most popular times to visit are spring, March to May, and fall, September to November. The weather is just more comfortable for walking around. Personally, I love the spring because of the cherry blossoms here. They're so beautiful and make everything feel magical. Check out my video on cherry blossoms in Japan for more information. If you're into skiing, then winter in Hokkaido might be perfect for you. They have lots of ski resorts and the Sapporo Snow Festival in February is incredible. It's one of the most popular winter events in Japan, featuring spectacular snow and ice sculptures, some more than 82 feet wide and 50 feet high. It's like stepping into a winter wonderland. When you're planning your trip to Japan, here are some must-haves to pack. First, and most important, comfortable walking shoes and thick socks. No matter when you come, you'll be walking a lot, so comfy shoes are a must. Make sure your socks are relatively new, without any holes, as you'll often need to take your shoes off indoors. Next, a backpack. It's essential to keep your hands free and avoid dragging around luggage. A backpack is perfect for carrying your essentials. Rain gear. It rains quite often here, so bring a rain jacket for yourself and a cover for your backpack. A small portable umbrella is also handy. You need yen. Despite its high-tech reputation, Japan is a very cash-oriented society and many places only accept cash. The good thing is, the yen is much weaker than the dollar, so a dollar really goes a long way. Also, bring a coin pouch, as you'll get a lot of coins. Next up, reusable bags and trash bags. Japan recently started charging for plastic bags at many stores, so having a reusable bag is a must for shopping. Additionally, there aren't many public trash cans, so you'll need small plastic bags to carry your trash until you find one. People in Japan often take their trash home with them. Next hand sanitizer and paper towels. Most public bathrooms don't have soap or paper towels, so bring a hand sanitizer and small paper towels. And last, pocket Wi-Fi. Renting a pocket Wi-Fi is a definite must. Most places in Japan don't have free Wi-Fi, and having internet access is essential for using Google Translate for signs and menus, and Google Maps for getting around. Order it online before your trip, and you can pick it up at the airport, or have it delivered to your hotel. Make sure to charge it every night, no matter what the battery level says. Sometimes they're not accurate, and you need Wi-Fi. One last thing, I recommend having an itinerary, some sort of plan for what you want to see and do while visiting Japan. This will save you a lot of money and time time. And here's why. Now let's talk about transportation passes in Japan. Food may be cheap, but traveling around Japan can get quite expensive. However, there are some great transportation passes that can save you both time and money. Here are three options you might want to consider. Number one, 
Japan Rail Pass. This pass gives you unlimited access to all JR trains, including bullet trains, buses, ferry service, and airport transfers. Not only will you save a lot of money, but you'll also avoid the hassle of constantly buying tickets at machines. You can even make seat reservations with your JR Pass, ensuring you get a seat on crowded trains. Keep in mind though, if you plan to stay mostly in Tokyo, or other major cities, this pass might not be worth it. It doesn't work on Tokyo subways. To be eligible, you need to enter Japan on a tourist visa. You can purchase the pass online with a passport and a credit card. Then pick it up at a JR designated ticket office when you arrive. I'll have a link in the description below with more details on how to use the pass. Number two is Japan Bus Line Pass. This pass allows you to travel around Japan by bus at a flat rate. Unlike the Japan Rail Pass, this one is available to anyone with a non-Japanese passport, including international travelers, non-Japanese residents like me, and international students. More than 70 bus companies across Japan participate, covering over 130 routes. It offers unlimited rides on luxury buses, and you can choose from three, five, or seven day passes. And the days don't have to be consecutive either. This pass is great for traveling between cities like Tokyo, Osaka, and Nagoya, as well as local tourist destinations. Buses can often access rural areas more easily than trains. Traveling overnight on buses can save you money on hotels, and you can start your activities first thing in the morning. You can buy this pass online before your trip or after you arrive here. I'll leave a link in the description for more information. Number three is JR Tokyo Wide Pass and other destination passes. These passes are available for tourists visiting Japan with two options also available for non-residents like me. They give you unlimited rides on select trains in designated areas for a set period. The days must be used consecutively, so plan your trip accordingly. Areas covered include the Tokyo area, the Tohoku area, Hokkaido, and Nagano and Niigata. One last side mention is the Tokyo one-day ticket. This is perfect if you're traveling all around Tokyo. For a flat fee, you get unlimited access to the subway lines and trains and buses in Tokyo. It's only only $10.30 for adults and $5.15 for children. This is a great deal, especially if you plan to visit many places in Tokyo in one day. Okay, there are many different types of passes available and it can be a bit confusing. However, planning your trip to take advantage of these passes can save you a lot of money. I'll leave links in the description for more information on the different passes. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. Next up, public transportation etiquette in Japan. When you visit Japan, you'll likely find yourself using public transportation at some point. Whether you opt for the train or bus passes I mentioned earlier, here are some transportation do's and don'ts, along with some insider advice to make your journey smoother. Number one, keep your bag on your lap. When traveling by train, you might be tempted to place your backpack or bag on the overhead rack. Don't do it! I learned this the hard way. When I first arrived in Japan, I visited a place called Odaiba and took the train and monorail. Excited to explore, I put my backpack on the overhead rack and forgot to take it down when I arrived. My bag had my money, passport, and other important items. Thankfully, Japan is a safe country, and the station staff helped me locate my bag. But I had to wait over an hour for it to be sent back on the next train. To avoid this stress and wasted time, keep your backpack on your lap. Number two. Stay on the designated lines. Before boarding the train or bus, you'll notice lines on the ground for queuing. People in Japan actually follow these lines, even during rush hour. Just stand behind the last person in line and you'll fit right in. Number three, on local trains, it's considered impolite to eat, drink, or talk on your phone. Be mindful of this rule to respect fellow passengers. Number four, go easy on the perfume and cologne. Japanese people typically use little to no perfume or cologne, and strong scents can be uncomfortable on crowded trains. In fact, some high-class sushi restaurants in Tokyo might even ask you to leave if you're wearing a strong scent. A friend of mine experienced this firsthand. Number five, be aware of train schedules. Trains stop running around midnight, so plan accordingly. If you're out past midnight, you might not be able to get back to your hotel unless you take a taxi. And number six, taking a taxi. If you take a taxi, remember that the door opens automatically. You don't open it yourself. Also, there's no tipping in Japan, even for taxi drivers, restaurants, or hotels. With these tips, you'll navigate Japan's public transportation like a pro. Other important things that you should know. When visiting Japan, there are some unique customs and practices that you should be aware of to blend in and show respect. Here are a few tips. Number one, greetings. When meeting someone, skip the handshake and give a 
a short bow instead. It's a simple way to show respect and follow local customs. Number two, handling money. In stores, restaurants, and hotels, you'll notice small trays by the cash register. Place your money or credit card on these trays instead of handing them directly to the cashier. The clerk will return your change or card in the same way. Sometimes, the clerk might pass you back your credit card with both hands. This gesture is a sign of respect. Number three, paying at restaurants. Unlike in the States, where you pay your server directly, in Japan, you actually go to the cash register, usually located at the front of the restaurant, to settle your bill. Number four, convenience tips. If you're exploring a specific area for a while, consider using the coin lockers found in many department stores or outside stations to store your bags. It's a convenient way to lighten your load. And number five, escalator etiquette. When using escalators, stand on the left side. The right side is reserved for people who want to walk up or down. Next is, must have apps and websites when traveling in Japan. Before you head to Japan, there are a few essential apps and websites that can make your trip smoother and more enjoyable. Here are my top recommendations. Let's start with the apps first. Number one, Google Translate. This app is a lifesaver for translating signs, menus, and just about anything else you encounter. I use it all the time. Number two, Google Maps. Essential for navigating from one location to another. Google Maps helps you see train and bus schedules and provides walking directions. It's especially handy once you've exited a station and need to find your destination. And number three, Japan Travel by Navitime. This app is considered one of the best for traveling in Japan. It offers route planning, transportation guidance, and location search. I find it fantastic for detailed travel planning. Okay, on to the websites. Number one, Japan National Tourism Organization. This site is amazing for trip planning, offering detailed information on destinations, things to do, and much, much more. It's a comprehensive resource for anyone visiting Japan. Number two, japanguide.com, another excellent website. It provides valuable information on various attractions and travel tips. Number three and number four, Tokyo Cheapo and Tokyo Time Out. If you're visiting Tokyo, these websites are great for finding budget-friendly options and current events. What? Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video makes your Japanese journey truly unforgettable. From tasty budget-friendly meals to must-have travel apps and key etiquette tips, you're now ready to explore Japan like a pro. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more Japanese adventures, safe travels, and enjoy every moment in beautiful Japan. Sayonara!